Hi, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a map like this, where it shows the total confirmed cases of coronavirus as of 5th of March 2020. Uh, this map has been created entirely using the data which has been uh, taken from the internet. So in this tutorial, you will learn how to use Python in order to grab data from, from external resources like uh, certain websites, how to do certain manipulations to that data, and how to make a meaningful map using those data using uh, GIS softwares like ArcGIS. So if you would like to see how to do that, let's get started with the tutorial. Alright, for this tutorial, the code editor which I'm going to be using is Spider. If you haven't configured Spider through the Anaconda distribution, uh, don't worry, I've got you covered. I have created a tutorial showing you how to install Python and how to install Spider uh, through the Anaconda distribution. So the link is down in the description below in case if you haven't uh, configured that. Plus, uh, I will be using two Python libraries for this, Pandas and GeoPandas. So again, uh, when you install Anaconda distribution, Pandas is actually automatically installed along with that. But GeoPandas, you have to configure it separately. And I have also done a tutorial showing you how to install GeoPandas without any hassle, just using one command uh, using the Anaconda prompt. So the link for that also is down in the description below. Uh, check that out if you haven't installed Pandas and GeoPandas. This is the code editor which I'm going to be using, that's Spider. Uh, first of all, before doing anything, I would like to first save my project. So in order to save your project, you can first navigate to the folder which you would like to work in using this browse button. Right now I'm already in the folder which I would like to work in. So I'm going to select that folder first. And then when I come to the file explorer over here, you will see that it shows me everything inside that folder. So I'm just going to right click on this white space over here and create a new module. And this module will be my .py file, .py file, which is the Python uh, Python file. So I'm just going to give a name, Coronavirus Cases 2020. All right, so after you have installed Pandas and GeoPandas, uh, we can import those two libraries just by typing import pandas as pd. And I'm going to also import GeoPandas as gpd all right now you might wonder how we are going to actually collect the data that we would need now today is 5th of march 2020 so in order to get the updated uh, cases of coronavirus i have found this website called uh, worldometers.info slash coronavirus so if i open that website over here you can see that currently uh, it's 96,612 cases and you can also see the information on the on the amount of people who recovered. I'm just going to scroll down a bit and you can see over here a very detailed table which shows the country and the total amount of cases, the total amount of new cases, total deaths, new deaths, active cases, total recovered and serious critical cases. So for the purposes of this tutorial I'm actually trying to extract the data directly from this table using the pandas library and i'm only going to focus on the first column uh, on the second column which shows you the total cases so i'm just going to sort of extract this data and project this data into a into a map uh, using with the help of python and also uh, another js software I'm, I'm i'm going to use arcgis but you can also use other softwares like qgis or global mapper or map window or any 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 uh, js software of your choice so now let's see how we can actually extract the data, data directly from this table. What I can do is I can actually create a, a variable called data. Now the variable names, if you're, if you're new to a sort of programming, I mean, you don't have to create the variable name same as the variable name that I'm going to pick. It's just uh, your choice. You can, you can name it as data one or even something else. I'm just going to use pd dot read HTML and over here I'm actually going to specify the the web address which is this one so in order to run this you can either hit F5 or you can simply uh, click this button this uh, run button and as you can see over here we did not get any error all right now you can do a quick check to see whether you 
to see whether what kind of uh, to see what kind of data you have imported you can do that either by typing the name of the variable over here in your in your python console and also you can have a look at the type of this variable now as you can see over here it's actually the uh, the type of the variable is a list not really a pandas data frame even if you go to this variable explorer you can actually already see that we have one variable which is of type list now if i open this and if i double click on this value you can see that we actually managed to successfully import that table isn't it maybe there are some rows which we might not need uh, plus few columns that we also which uh, which we might also need to get rid of but apart from that everything looks quite fine so what i'm going to do is actually i'm just going to take this information out from a list and i'm go i'm going to save that into a pandas data frame now one way of doing this quite easily is actually to create um, is through a for loop so you can do something like this for i'm going to create another variable called for data cases in data print now i'm going to put the same variable over here now now look over here when i run the program we sort of managed to extract whatever inside that list into a data frame this is a pandas data frame now if you want to have a quick check on on your ipython console what is the type of this uh, data cases you can just do it simply by typing type data cases and now it shows that it's a pandas data frame all right so if i open this data case pandas data frame you see that we have numerous number of columns out of which i would require only this country other column and the total cases column now either you can get rid of all these other columns or you can create a new variable uh, which only contains the, the the columns that you actually require so i think it's easier to select the number of columns or the columns that you would require rather than trying to delete the columns that you don't need so that's what i would do over here now i can type data cases and now i can make this data cases equal to data cases and over here you can specify only the amount of only the names of the columns that you actually would like to have in this case i would like to have the these two columns which is country comma other and total cases now don't worry about this because in programming we can actually define variables like this so what happens is uh, this new new variable will be assigned whatever the statement that you have typed over here and it will sort of replace the data that has been assigned to this variable uh, prior to that so now if i run this and if i go to the variables explorer and if i check the data cases you can see that we only extracted the amount of data that we we only extracted the columns that that's sort of relevant to us and we got rid of the other other columns basically so now we have the total cases recorded for each country in in here now my objective is actually to finally transfer this information into a world map so i have already prepared a world map if i open this file explorer you can see that i have a I have uh, a shapefile over here which which is a world map so that's where this geopandas python library is going to be handy we can import these shape files without any issue you don't need a gis software to open the shape files and you can even manipulate uh, shape files using the geopandas software using the geopandas library so i'm going to create another vari variable called world data and that's going to be equal to gpd that comes from here which means we're actually calling the geopandas library and read file 
and we specify the file path over here and the name of the file I'm just going to copy it over here rather than typing typing it again worldmap.shp that's the shape file now I can run this one again all right if I go to the variables explorer you can see that we have another new variable called world data which I defined over here and if you open this world data file over here you can see that it has just two columns the first column shows you the name of the country it has quite a number of countries in fact it's a world map so it has all the all the countries and also there's another column which corresponds to a name called geometry now this is actually a special column which makes it a geo data frame uh, not just a pandas data frame so what i what do i mean by that if you type world data dot plot like this you can see actually this is the plot of this uh, world data and this plot is enabled thanks to that geometry column so even you can just zoom in on certain areas you can even pan this so this is basically a shape file which we and uh, we are going to transfer the information that we recorded into this data cases variable and we're going to display this in a map all right so so that's done now the way I'm going to transfer this information from this data cases variable which has only which has a column the the countries which were this coronavirus cases were recorded I'm going to actually transfer these these numbers based on the name of the country but there could be one issue that the name of the country in this file might not be precisely same as the name of the file uh, to the to the way the name of the the country has been defined in this shape file so just to be on the safe side I'm just actually going to do a quick check what I'm going to check is I'm actually going to check I'm going to pick each and every name from this data cases which we downloaded actually from the from the from the website and I'm going to check whether there is a similar entry in the shape file or not for example first I'm going to select the name China and I'm going to actually loop through all the names of this world data geo data frame and I'm going to see whether there is an equivalent name as China in this geo data frame or not if there is if there is an equivalent uh, term I'm just going to pass it and if there is not I'm actually going to print a statement saying that this certain country is actually not in this world data list so if you have some experience with if else commands you know that uh, I'm actually going to use a conditional statement over here and in order to do the looping I'm actually going to use a for loop so it can go something like this for I'm just going to name it as items now items is actually the variable name you can put a put a name of your of your of your choice over here in data cases now data cases by itself is a a pandas data frame I'm actually going to transfer this when I'm looping it's easier for me to have a list instead of having a pandas data frame so either I can convert this data cases the the corresponding column which contains the names of the countries into a list separately or I can actually do it directly in here so if I were to do it directly over here what I can do is I can actually specify the column that I'm going to refer to which is the country other column I'm going to specify over here to list now if I only select this one and then if I go to the IPython console and if I run this one over here you can see that it's showing me some data now if I check if I check the type of this you will see that actually it's a panda series 
because when we take if you, just imagine a pandas data frame as a table if you have only one column in your table we actually call that individual column a panda series so in this case i'm actually specify selecting only one column that's why it's saying that it's a series now if i select this whole thing and if i check the type of that now it says that it's a list so let's have a look at that how this list looks you can just press enter over here and you can see that it's actually starting from a square bracket and ending with a square bracket. That's how we define lists. So now it's a list. So that's that's how you can actually convert this whole uh, thing into a list on the go rather than assigning uh, different variables into it. All right, so now we are inside the loop. So I'm actually going to create another variable called world data list and that's going to be equal to world data to list similar to what I did over here I just converted the Sorry, over here I have to specify the name of the column which contains the countries. So if I come back to this variables explorer, variables explorer, and if I open this world data, you can see that the name which contains the countries, the name of the column is actually in name. So I'm just going to select it over here and convert that into a list. And now I'm going to specify the conditional statements. So if the items so if so for each loop the items which means now while it's looping through one after another these items are actually going to change so for example since this is looping through this uh, country other column first the item is going to be equal to china and in the second loop the item is going to be equal to s dot south korea iran italy diamond princess germany uh, and so on so what I'm saying is if this items for each iteration is inside the world data list then actually we don't have an issue so we don't need to do anything when you don't need to do anything you can just simply pass a pass statement and it will not do anything but if you don't find that name which means else you have to do something now one way to ask the program to indicate the things the names of the countries which are actually not inside the the shapefiles name list you can simply pass a print command and say that items now as i told you in the first iteration these items is going to be equal to china so if china is actually not in that in the shapefiles list it's going to say items so in this case it's going to be china in the first iteration is not in the world data list all right so now we can run this one and see what happens wow Okay, you can see that we have a number of countries which are actually not matching. First of all, S Korea is not in the list. Iran is not in the list. Diamond Princess is not in the list. I actually don't expect Diamond Princess to be on the list because Diamond Princess is not a country. Uh, if you care to Google this, this is actually a cruise ship. So, of course, you won't get the cruise ship in the, in the world map. So, definitely, I'm not going to include this one in our final representation. This is going to get... Uh, this is going to get kicked out USA is not in the list I'm guessing that USA is not in the list because probably in the world map they might be mentioning the name of the USA to be either United States or United States of America and same the same thing might go for UK I think it could be the case where it could be the case that uh, in the shapefile it's mentioned as United Kingdom UAE Vietnam Macau 
and so on so now since it's actually not that much only a few entries we can manually go and change the the shape file the name of the shape file so for example if so i can actually do a quick check uh using my gis software which i'm for which i'm using the arcgis so if i open my files over here you can see i have the shape file over here i'm just going to simply drag and drop it over here now coming back to this you can see that south korea is not in the world data list so this is basically the world data so i'm just going to go and take the select tool and i'm going to i know where south korea is so i'm just going to click over here to see the to get the information about the country all right now you see the name of korea is actually in the form of korea comma republic of so that's why it did not recognize now iran it's a bit surprising to me why iran is not in the list so let's go over here and check iran all right it's actually in the form of iran islamic republic of so that's why it did not identify diamond princess for obvious reasons usa and uk let's have a look yeah as i as i guessed usa is named as united states and uk probably united kingdom okay now just like that you can actually have a look at each and every country uh, so now what i'm going to do is for example this south korea i'm just going to stick to the values stick to the names which are which is mentioned in this website so i'm just going to retain this s.korea to be my final representation so, and i'm just going to change the the name over here in the in this in the world map from south korea to s.korea so so what you can do is you can actually type world data dot replace now first you have to rip you have to type the name which is already in there so if i go back to the name that i can find for south korea you can just copy the selected name and if you paste it over here it's korea republic of and i'm going to replace that with the name which is in my list which is actually this one south korea and make sure you enter this in place equals true in order to make that replacement a permanent one so similarly i'm actually going to do it for all of these entries except for the diamond princess so i'll actually just skip the fast forward the video uh, of me doing that all right after you have done that you no longer need this check so i'm just going to select everything and press control 1 so you can actually comment that out so let's run this program and see all right so now given the fact that i'm actually going to do the the transfer of data based on the countries based on the name of the country i have to actually have the name of the country uh, i have to have the column which contains the names of the country to be a common name so if i open this shape file the geodata frame over here the name of the the column which contains the country's names is actually name in capital uh, but if i open these data cases it's actually the country comma other so i'm so i'm just going to go ahead and change this name from country other to have the similar name as the geodata frame uh, which is name so you can actually simply replace the names of pandas data frames just by first specifying the the pandas data frame data cases dot rename country comma other 
and then I have to type the name by which I'm going to replace this uh, existing name and that's going to be name name again make sure you make the in place to be equal to true so that this replacement is actually becoming a permanent replacement so we can go ahead and run this now And if I open the variables explorer and if I open the data cases, you can see that the name has already been changed to NAME. All right, now we can actually do a simple uh, merge operation. I'm just going to create another variable called combined, and the combined is equal to. world data and I'm going to merge this with data cases on this column name so that column name is name all right now we can run this and see what happens if I open the variables explorer and if I go to this combined you can see that it contains the name of the country and this geom the special geometry column which makes this combined not just a pandas data frame but a geopandas geo data frame and also it shows the number of cases now you can see already here china has the maximum number of cases according to this and it shows the number of cases of each country now if you want to weave the information from this of this combined geo data frame you can even just type combined dot head maybe we can type 20 and it will show us 20 entries you can see the country's name and you have the total cases over here now if I type if I check the type of this combined it says that it's a geopandas geodata frame which means you can save this combined as a shapefile back into your into any of your folders now the way to do that would be you can specify combined to file and over here you can specify the path to which you would like to save the file just going to put it in the same folder put it over here I'm going to specify the file name as combined.shp now now check this out when I run this the new shape files actually gets created over here you see we have a set of files which is actually which comes along with the with the creation of a shape file so now actually our task is pretty much done we can now open our GIS software you can actually either use matplotlib uh, in order to plot in order to create a nice plot of the map but I'm going to keep that to another tutorial uh, how we can actually create beautiful maps using geopandas uh, so for the for this tutorial, I'm actually going to use back my GIS software, which is ArcGIS. You can even have a quick look at the attributes table. You can see now over here it's only the name of the country. Now, if you open this, you can actually drag and drop the the file which you the shape file which you created using GeoPandas, which happens to be the countries where the coronavirus cases were recorded. So now in order to look this map a bit more pretty, uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead and get rid of Antarctica just for the purposes of uh, keeping it a bit clean. So I just can edit.
and then I can select this and press delete and I'm going to save that edit all right now if I open this combined shape file you can see that it has the name of the country plus the total number of cases so I'm just going to go first go to the properties of the of the base layer and I'm going to go to symbology and I'm going to assign a different color probably let's say we assign something like gray color because I want to sort of keep the colors which were not affected by the coronavirus uh, in a different color and then when we go to this combined layer and go to properties we can then go to uh, probably quantities and over here as the value now we're actually going to create a range of colors based on the total number of cases so that's actually going to be my value and we can break this into a certain number of classes no I can maybe divide it into let's say about 15 classes so over here what it shows is the range so the lightest yellow is actually showing the cases with one to two cases and this dark brown is showing the cases ranging from 6089 up to 80430 so you can actually go ahead, and go ahead and change the color ramp which has a color variation of let's say something like this or you can just go with a single color like uh, for example if I select this red color now you can see it's actually showing different shades of red uh, in like this so I guess for this tutorial I'm actually going to stick with this color and I'm just going to go over here and change this to be like that and I can also add a base map I'm going to use the open straight map all right so we can actually change the transparency of the base map because we don't want to focus our attention much on that maybe we can put about 45 percent we'll see how it looks yeah i think that 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 looks good enough all right so if you want to if you want to transfer this map into a proper map you can actually go to layout view over here now i would like to have this map in the landscape form so you can actually change your layout using this button and and I'm going to select a4 size but, uh, landscape all right so I'm just going to go back to the data view over here and then I'm going to take the magnifying glass and I'm just going to actually draw select my area of preference just to cover the the whole just to cover the whole area which has information and then I'm going to go back to the layout view well you still have some spaces left over here and you can you can always extend your map in order to fit and I'm going to go back over here and I take the magnifying glass again and I'm going to zoom into the whole image now you can see that it actually covers the whole uh, extent of the of the map alright now we can add add a certain things in order to make this map actually a bit more meaningful so one thing you can do is to add the north arrow quite simple you can go to insert and add the north arrow from here I'm going to select a north arrow of your of my preference I'm just going to select something simple like this and I can also add a scale bar can go to insert and add a scale bar over here you can select the units of course we are talking about a massive scale so over here I'm actually just going to 
go with kilometers which would be an appropriate way to actually define this kind of massive scales and now the most important thing that you can you have to do is actually to transfer your data over here into a legend so you can actually go to insert and go to legend and then you can remove the entries that you don't want to keep over here so i'm just going to select this world map and i'm going to remove that and I'm going to just uh, go ahead and click next you can spend some time you know if you would like to uh, make certain changes into the font and the sizes but I'm just going to for this tutorial just going to go ahead because my objective is just to get this data into the map rather than uh, making the data pretty I would say now you can see that we still actually have some room to improve this map what I can do is I can actually get rid of this total case over here and I can directly specify over here something like total confirmed cases and that would be transferred to here so just to isolate this from the rest I'm actually just going to only specify a border not really put anything else which I can do by going to the frame and specifying a border over here yeah I think that's good enough and finally I'm going to also add one heading you can do that by going to insert and add a title so the title that I would like to add is total confirmed cases of coronavirus as of fifth March twenty twenty. Now I can click OK. If you would like to make certain changes to this, uh, to the text of this heading, you can actually just double click on that and you can go to change symbol. And then over here, you can make the necessary changes that you would like. I'm just going to retain the font, uh, font type. Maybe I'll increase the font size to be 20. Now let's see how that, how that looks. Yeah, I think that's good enough for this map. All right, now finally you can export this map as a JPEG. So you can go to file and export map. Right, I'm just going to name this as cases. The type you can select JPEG and the resolution, I'm just going to select the resolution to be about 300 DPI. Right, you can open your folder and you can see that the JPEG is already here and if you double click on that you will be able to see quite relatively a high resolution map of the total confirmed cases of coronavirus as of uh, 5th March 2020. So this is actually quite an accurate uh, descriptive map, map of the of the situation right now. As you can see over here the most number of cases has been rec uh, recorded in China followed by Iran over here, Italy, quite red as well, United States, not so good either, uh, certain countries like South Africa, Sri Lanka has only recorded a very uh, minimal number of cases. So this is the situation right now. Obviously we are hoping that the virus wouldn't spread to the other countries which, uh, which has been uh, marked in, in grey colour. Uh, we want this to stop as soon as possible but uh, as of now this is the situation and and this is how you can basically grab data from uh, from external sources and put them into a map with the help of uh, python geopandas and uh, as well as uh, gis softwares like arcgis so if you if you learn something new from this tutorial uh, 
click that like button and if you would like to see interesting tutorials like these uh, definitely you can consider subscribing as well so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one